Hello all, I want to talk about Taylor series. This is section 11.10 in the book. The idea is we're going to take any old function like e to the x and we'd like to represent it as a power series. We want to write a power series that we hope will converge to the value of the function for as many possible values of x. You may or may not be able to do this and it's hard to tell, we'll learn how, but it's hard to tell when you can. Most nice functions you can. Um, but what we're first going to learn is the way that will work if it's going to work. Okay, so we're going to learn how to associate a power series centered at a to a function f of x. This is called the Taylor series of f centered at a. And if the function can be approximated by a power series, this is the power series. Um, and now, most of the time, we'll focus on the special case where a is zero. A Taylor series centered at zero, we call a Maclaurin series. It's exactly the same, it's just Maclaurin wanted to get his name on something. Okay, so the Taylor series of a function f centered at a is the power series whose nth derivative at a Right, you take the nth derivative and then you plug in x equals a is the same as the nth derivative of the function at a for every n. So all its derivatives at that one point agree with the function. Um, if you do a little calculus, you will see that that gives you this formula, which is <clears throat> the we have the sum of x minus a to the k, so it's a power series centered at a, and the coefficient of each x minus a to the k is the kth derivative of f evaluated at the number a, so that's a number, divided by k factorial. A little easier to see what's going on if you look at the first few terms. The zeroth term is f of a. The first term is just the derivative times x minus a the derivative at a. The th next term is the second derivative at a divided by 2 times x minus a squared. Then the third derivative divided by 6, the fourth derivative by 24, and so on. Okay, When a is 0, that gets simpler because instead of x minus a to the nth power, you have x to the nth power. Instead of the derivative evaluated at a, it's evaluated at 0. So that means to write the Taylor series for a, all you need to know are the nth derivatives of f of x at a. So let's start with a simple example. Let's take the function e to the x. Remember its graph looks like this. And we're going to take the Taylor series centered at a at, at zero, which is to say a Maclaurin series. The first step is to find all the derivatives of your function. So for a complicated function, that can be a mess. But for e to the x, it's really nice. Because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The second derivative of e to the x is the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. The 183rd derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay. All of those, when you plug x equals 0 in, you get e to the 0, you get 1. So all those numbers that you plug into the Taylor series, they're all 1. Um, what does the Taylor series look like? It looks like those numbers divided by k factorial. So we get e to the x is represented by the Maclaurin series fk of 0 over k factorial times x to the k, which is figured out that is 1 over k factorial times x to the k. Here's what that series looks like. You want to commit the first few terms to memory because that's our easiest example of a Taylor series, and it's perhaps the most useful. It is not hard to check that this series, one x to the k over k factorial, has an infinite radius of convergence. You can guess that because the uh, k factorial, you know, um, causes the series to converge really well. It in the k factorial in the denominator makes the whole series go to makes the whole series converge regardless of x. 
So the series converges everywhere, and it turns out, so we're going to learn how to tell this, but that's for the future, it turns out that it converges to e to the x everywhere. That is to say that for any value of x, the sum of 1 over k factorial x to the k, an infinite sum of numbers, adds up to the number e to the x. If you, once again, like we talked about before, if you write out, if you look at the zeroth in the first term, which is 1 plus x, you get the tangent line. If you add in 1 plus x plus x squared over 2, you get something quadratic that that is just tangent and very smoothly so to e to the x at that point. If you add x cubed, you get something that looks like that. You get things that get closer and closer near to 0 to e to the x. They generally do a lousy job when you get far from 0, but they get better and better as you add more terms. Alrighty, let's do another example. This time we'll do sine of x. Okay? We have to find all the derivatives of sine of x. That's a little bit trickier, but not too much. The derivative of sine of x is cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. The derivative of minus sine x is minus cosine x. And one more time, the derivative of minus cosine x is minus minus or plus sine x. And then it goes back around again. Okay, so the 184th derivative of sine of x is sine of x. The 185th, cosine x. So it repeats every four forever. When you plug, we're doing the Maclaurin series, so that means a equals zero. When you plug a equals zero in to each of those functions, sine of zero is zero, cosine zero is one, minus sine zero, this should have a minus in front of it, is zero, and minus cosine zero is minus one, and then you go back to zero and you repeat ad infinitum. Okay? So that tells you that all the odd derivatives are one or minus one, all the even derivatives are zero. Um, it takes a little sneakiness to write this nicely. So because all the even k, the coefficient's going to be zero, when we plug that into when we plug that in here, all the even terms disappear. So we're only going to get x to odd powers. So a nice way to represent that um, is we can write uh, every odd number k as 2n plus 1. So as we run through all the natural numbers n, we'll run through all the odd numbers k that way. Um, and then, so if k is 2n plus 1, then when k is 0, we get 1. When k is 1, we get minus 1. When k is 2, we get 1. We get exactly minus 1 to the n. Okay, So all of that tells you that the Taylor series at, x equal, at a equals 0 for sine of x is given by, so remember we're going to rename k 2n plus 1. So now when we do this sum, we only get the odd powers. So we're dividing by k factorial, which is 2n plus 1 factorial, and the signs alternate as you run through the odd numbers. So what does this look like? When n equals 0, we get plus 1 over 1 times x to the 1. When n is 1, we get minus 1 over 3 factorial times x to the third. The next one, when n is 2, is plus 1 over 5 factorial times x to the fifth, and so on. Once again, not too hard to check that this series converges everywhere. The radius is infinity. Um, and it turns out that what it converges to everywhere is sine of x. So we're justified in writing that sine of x is equal to this infinite series once again. Okay, so if you want to find the sine of 
you plug 0.4 into this polynomial, you keep taking more terms until you've got it as accurately as you need. If you followed what I just said about sine, you should be able to modify it without too much trouble to do cosine. You will find, in that case, the kth derivative is 0 when k is odd, and alternate sine when k is even. So we'll do the similar trick of calling k 2n. So that captures only the even numbers. OK, one more example. Let's go back to green. Um, now I want to do not a Maclaurin series. I want to do a Taylor series. So I want to use a is different from 0. So let's do a equals 1. We'll use the function ln of x. The reason is ln of 0 is undefined. So we're not going to make any sense out of a series centered where the function is undefined. <clears throat> if f of x is ln of x, the first derivative is x to the minus 1. The second derivative, derivative of that is minus 1, x to the minus 2. Next time you multiply by negative 2 to get plus 2 and subtract 1 from the exponent, x to the minus 3. After that, you multiply, take its derivative by multiplying that by negative 3 and subtract 1 from the exponent, and you're going to keep going like that. Notice the coefficients here change sign, and they all look like factorials, except the first one. If you plug in 1 into ln of 1, you get 0, but all the rest, when you plug in x equals 1, you get 1, minus 1, 2, minus 6, the next will be minus uh, and then that is uh, 24. The next one will be plus 120. It's always factorials and signs. And if you check a guess, check against k and fix it, you will find that the kth derivative of ln of x, evaluated at 1, is minus 1 to the k times k minus 1 factorial. That means the Taylor series for ln of x at x minus 1 at a equals 1 looks like this. And when you plug the formula for f to the k of 1 in, you get minus 1 to the k, k minus 1 factorial over k factorial. That you recognize as an opportunity for the um, recursive formula. Each number factorial is that number times the previous number factorial. So the k minus 1 factorials cancel out, and you are left with minus 1 to the k over k, x minus 1 to the k. And that looks like this. The first term is x minus 1. The second term is minus 1 half, x minus 1 squared. The third term is plus 1 third, x minus 1 cubed, and so on. We actually worked this out in the Zoom class on the 16th for those keeping score. Um, this time, the series does not converge everywhere. Um, the series converges. There's no exponentials. You will find it has a radius of convergence of 1. Since it's centered at 1, that means it's going to converge between 0 and 2. And then you check the endpoints. At x equals 0, you get 1 over k, which diverges. And at x equals 2, when you plug that in, you get um, minus 1 to the k over k. That converges conditionally by the alternating series test. You get a square bracket. I am rushing through those calculations because I am leaving it to you to work them out on your own, not because I expect you to follow them in your, in your head. Um, so ln of x is, so this series converges between 0 and 2. And once again, I will tell you, it converges to the natural log of x. I am going to stop here. Next time, we'll explore how close the first few terms are, and that will allow us to have a method to figure out when the series converges to the thing that it should. But the general principle is almost all nice, sensible functions, their Taylor series converges to the function when it's defined. There are exceptions, but they get pretty hairy.